church and how I got to this church and just praising God for this church, you know, and everything that, that God has done. And it's just such a blessing in what God has done in the last year in my life. It's just, okay, God, you're real, you know. And he's been touching people's lives and making a difference and, um, and people's life. Sharon, can I share what you shared Wednesday night about your heart? Sharon was saying that she has a, she has, was having some dizziness and she hasn't had it. It hasn't bothered her. She don't even know whether she's going back to the doctor or not. It's it's gone. She hasn't had it. You know? And I think that's the blessing that that sometimes we don't even realize. And the song that we sang, God can turn it around. Man, keep that one in your heart. You know, you look at Jamie and the family's been praying for 12 years or seven years. That things would turn around. And they finally are getting the desires of their hearts. You know, and I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what's happened to you. God can turn it around. For his good. That's a promise. Stay on Romans 8.28. That he'll turn it around for the good. You'd be willing to step out in faith. Because unless you step out in faith, nothing's ever going to happen. You can sit there on your blessed assurance the rest of your life. Remember Matthew 7, I believe it's Matthew 7, 7. This says everyone, everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who seeks will find. It says everyone. Does that put you in that category? And we think of Josh. I want to pray for Josh um, as soon as I get done here. But I think that we need to realize that God wants to turn your life around. He wants to make a difference. And you just got to trust that in your heart that God's going to do it. You got to what? Believe to receive. And when you pray, you, you need to believe that you're going to receive it. And what's the first thing that comes in when that happens? No. Unbelief. Well, he won't do it for you. We talked about Wednesday night. Paul was persecuting sinners and killing them. Or not sinners, Christians. Paul was persecuting them and God had an encounter with him. And he said, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And from that point, God showed himself to Paul and changed his life. And the Bible said he went out immediately and started preaching the gospel. People was trying to kill him. Anybody tried to kill you for the gospel yet? Makes us wonder if we're doing our job, doesn't it? But you see, God can turn it around for you. All right? Keep that hope in your life. Somebody needed to hear that today. It's good to see Destiny here. You're going to be going where? Belgium. Belgium. For how long? Three to six years. Three to six years. The last Sunday. The last Sunday. And you're spending it with us. Everybody lift your hands towards us. What's your husband's name? I forgot. Troy. Don't get old. Okay. <laughs> Father, we just pray for this couple as they go. We pray your grace and your mercy will be upon them and their children. And Father, that favor will be found in their life. Protect them and watch over them, Father. And Father, this assignment, we believe you've ordained it. And Father, that you will follow through and that you will put them in a place they need to be to do what you called them to do. So, Father, we just pray that your hand would be upon them for protection. And, Father, be with the rest of the family because they're going to miss them. It's going to be a long three to six years, Father. But, Father, we know you have a purpose. Now, bless 
destiny and Troy and the family, Father. Bless them beyond measure. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. All right. Um, just thinking about today and the freedom that we have, and as you go back in history um, and to think about how God formed this nation, and because of the nation that God gave us and the men that gave their lives for the freedom, the men that wrote the Declaration of Independence and, and what they agreed on and what they thought might be that it was God's divine appointment for this nation to be born. And now we can look at the past and we can see that. We can see how God has blessed this nation because we followed him and his promises and, and his commandments. You know, we said God first, and that's exactly what they did. Um, I found an article... And it said the United States was founded on Judeo-Christian values. And I think that a lot of people don't know this. Um, and the reason it was founded on these things. And so that we need to really understand, and I'm going to read you some of these things that some of our forefathers really believed and why they wanted this nation to be a nation under God. And now that's whittling away. There's people that are whittling away of God's word. We took it out of the schools. Look at the results. Shootings. We've tried to take God out of the country. Look at the results. About every mass murder in the last years has all been because of mental illness, you know? And you know, that was one of the curses on, in biblical time on a group of people because they denied Christ. And you see the fruits of what some people were trying to do in this land. You reap what you sow. And it's up to us as Christians to help turn this around. And sometimes we think, can we? Can we turn this around? Only if, if God's people humble themselves. If we humble ourselves and, and do what the forefathers did. And what they built this nation. There's some things they say in here that that um, was astonishing to me, and I don't know if I knew this or not. But anyway, I'm going to read this. In our day and age, it is popular to believe that the United States was founded by secular white men who were not religious. Not only is this untrue, but rather it is backhanded slap to the face of history. One who only need, one on, who would only need to get a glimpse into the nation's past to realize that the U.S. was founded on principles and beliefs that are directly from the Bible. Here I will explain using the foundation, founding documents and direct quotes from our founders of evidence, the obvious proof that they are a people who stand on the ground that was meant to be set apart from the rest of the world as a holy ground. To be set apart. And you know, that's what God wants to do with us is to set us apart for his kingdom. That's the promise. We're just traveling through here. Our, our home is in heaven. We're just here on this earth to make this earth a little better and more like heaven than it was. And that was the founding articles that our forefathers based this principle on. They gave this a lot of thought. They gave this a lot of prayer. 
to come up with a nation that was God-oriented. It goes on to say, the first document I want to examine in the deck is the Declaration of Independence. What many do not realize is that the Declaration of Independence is not just a slip, slip of paper that states we are now free. It was originally written, however, as an appeal. The common belief in those days was the King of England was selected by God through the process of called divine right. This means that only way that one can combat legally the actions taken by a king is by appealing to a higher authority than the king himself. In this case, it was God. The most well-known sentence in the Declaration states, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with a certain alienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This sentence is direct appeal to God that the king of England was stepped outside the boundaries of his divine right to rule and they are invoking the name of God in order to legally accuse the king. So as can be seen in the Declaration of Independence and the structure of the British government, the Founding Fathers appealed to God as a form of higher authority for their freedom and the inalienable rights. By stating this in the Declaration, it is clear proof that they recognize God as an invaluable part of the founding of this country. That right there says it all. God was the center. God was the one that could only bless a nation, give a nation favor. And from this time, what happened? The United States was blessed beyond measure. We become the richest nation in the world. We had the biggest military in the world. We police the whole world for tyranny and all the things that are coming against um, life. Those that, that are slave labor and all those things. And God ordained this nation to be where it is today if we don't forget God. Now, we didn't forget God, and God blessed it beyond measure. We was the lender instead of the lendee. But the bottom line is, it's all, it's all turns around. And if you go to Deuteronomy 28, and you read all the curses, you can see all the curses that have come upon this nation. Because we forgot God. And we're allowing things that God would never allow. And I can't imagine what our forefathers would think if they see my nation today. That we forgot God. Stop and think about that. Furthermore, the founding fathers even spoke of their Christian beliefs. They didn't just write them down. John Adams, a founding father and the president of the United States stated, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. Hello? That was one of the things that I just blew me away. That he stated that. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. This is true because our Constitution, as well as the Declaration of Independence, was crafted by religious people for religious people. Thomas Jefferson 
was like Adam's, a man of religion. Therefore, naturally, he would agree with Adam's that the government bound by the inheriting to the moral code was absolutely necessary for the governing of religious people. With this in mind, we would seem entirely illogical to assume that the founding fathers meant that the, meant that the church had no place in government. It is for this reason that one is able to clearly see that a great nation would be founded on Judeo-Christian values. For one to say otherwise would be forced to not only disregard the evidence proven here, but they would be faced with the choice of whether or not they want to change the story of the United States founding. For that is the only way that some can state that we have no Judeo-Christian roots. I think I forgot one. Just a minute. Here we go. Okay, another, <clears throat> this should have went before the last one I just read. Another prevalent phase is the separation of church and state. This expression is bound to be used whenever religious conversations take place. However, it is often used without the proper understanding of its original meaning and purpose. Nowhere in the Constitution are these words ever used. Rather, they are founded in a letter by Thomas Jefferson to the Danbury Baptist Association. It was used by Jefferson to reference to the defense of the First Amendment, which prohibits government interference in religious actions, activities. Then the separation of church and state does not refer to the church staying out of the government, but instead it means that the government must stay out of the church. If you consider logically, this makes, a com makes complete sense. They founded on Christian principles, on biblical principles. <clears throat> And I don't know about you, but in your life, if you do away with God, it's not going to be a good thing. So we need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for our leaders. We need to pray that we come back. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and seek my face, I will heal their land. And that's what these men did in the beginning. They was trying to get away from the taxation and all the things of the England government and the king. And God wanted them free. And this is just a picture. And, a, and we can see where we are today. We can see how it all makes sense. It makes sense that God ordained the United States. World War I, World War II. Korean War, Vietnam War, the Japanese, you know, when they bombed, bombed Pearl Harbor, and all the things that was going on around the world, and still we police the world. Even we're over helping them against Russia, you know, because the things that they're doing are just not right. I have one question to ask you. What if the United States wasn't founded on these principles and wasn't born as a godly nation? What would this world be? What would this world be? And so God had a plan, not only for this nation, but the nation of Israel. 
And we talked about that a few weeks ago. But how God's bringing the people back. It's the end times. And God said that he would cause those dry bones to rise up. And the deserts would become, would become flourishing. And that's exactly what's going on over in Israel today. Nations are trying to take Israel out. But one that comes to their defense more than anyone else is the United States. <laughs> is that a coincidence? And all the things that we see and all the people that we've talked about this morning that have died for our right to be free. That have given their lives. That's what we celebrate today. We mourn, but yet we celebrate that they was willing to give their lives. You know, there's a scripture in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, if you have your Bibles. Verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. For this is your spiritual act of what? Worship. Did you know that this is a spiritual act of worship? To offer yourself as living sacrifices? <laughs> Do you realize that most sacrifices are dead? Jesus died for our sacrifices, but he wants us to be living sacrifices while we are here on this world, on this earth, making a difference for the kingdom of God. And that's what he's called each and every one of us to do. That's what he called those that fought for our freedoms. That's what he, those that sacrificed even to the Declaration of Independence. And, and they just didn't muddle this thing out. They prayed, they fasted, and they sought God for a nation that would be ruled by who? The people. And the bottom line is, that brought freedom. That brought peace. And even as us being living sacrifices can be freedom in our life. To understand that God doesn't want you to worry about your sin. He doesn't want you to be tormented by your sin. He wants you to be free from guilt and shame. And how many of us are in a burden or chain to guilt and shame? And God come to set you free from that. God didn't write this book by mistake. It was written by the Holy Spirit speaking to these men that wrote these books. The Holy Spirit spoke to them about that. <laughs> Just like our nation being birthed. Man couldn't have thought of all that. It was the freedom that they seen in Christ that made it the way it was. They sought God for that freedom. And I guess the question for us is how much do we seek God? For your own freedom. For your own things that are going on in your life. Are you seeking God for those things? Are you being a living sacrifice? Man, that's contrary. If you stop and think about it. But it's what God wants us to be. And he goes on. Holy and pleasing to God. It is your spiritual act of worship. Do you realize when you do something for somebody else and don't expect anything back for it, that that's a part of worship? Reaching out and touching other people's life, being dedicated to other people, not just yourself. Jesus was our example. He was not dedicated to himself. He thought of you while you was yet a sinner. And he was willing to die for your sins, whether you accept him or you don't accept him. And that's your free will. God even gives you freedom in that. You don't have to love him. You don't have to serve him. God gives you the freedom to do what you want to do in this earth. 
But at the end of this life, you're going to give an account to God for what you did in this life. If he gave you life, he ought to be able to count for your life, hadn't he? And he's going to make sure that what you did for him is going to be noticed, even if it's not noticed here. That's a living sacrifice. Doing to others instead of yourself. Putting others first. Jesus put you first and died for your sins that you don't have to worry about them anymore. That you don't have to have a guilt trap. You don't have to be ashamed. That's in the past. And what God is, in, what he's wanting for you is a good future. Never forget that. I don't care what you've been through. God can turn it around. He turned, this, he turned these people's hearts around to create this nation. And they seen what needed to be done. And they trusted God. And we come and become the wealthiest nation on this earth. How much sprung from here? And it springs from Israel too. The inventions that the Israel has come out with year after year after year. But other nations are jealous. Why are they having all this? Why are they being blessed? And you know why? Most of them in Israel aren't even serving God, but they're his chosen people. And he spoke about the nation. He blessed that nation. And he called it its own. He goes on. Verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do you know something? You've got to renew your mind before your heart gets changed. You've got to think on the things of God. God's things. That's what these men did when they founded the Declaration of Independence. And the Constitution, they thought of God, put him in the front of things, and how God would bless a nation. And that ought to be our heart, that we realize that we don't have to be conformed to the pattern of this world, but there's a better way to live, but be renewed by your mind. The renewing of your mind will change your heart. You've got to quit thinking, stinking thinking. And you've got to start thinking like God thinks, and he'll change your mind. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. You know, we all get a measure of faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's what will change and strengthen your faith. By hearing God's word. How many of us want to hear God's word? How many of us spend time in God's word and want to do what God wants us to do? And you want the best life that you want to, you could ever have is only through following God's word. And just like our nation was raised up, you can be raised up because you follow God's word. And then God, and you trust Jesus Christ with your salvation. Verse 4, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to what? To what? All the others. Wow. People today don't want that. They belong to you. You don't belong to them. That's what they say. They have the right. That's what it's all about right now. And that's contrary to the word of God because I just read it to you. Each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to what? His faith. How big is your faith? Can it move mountains? 
The Bible says it can. The Bible says you need to speak to those mountains. And they'll move. Now, are you going to believe God or are you going to believe your doubt and unbelief? Because if you're believing your doubt and unbelief, that mountain's never going to move. Seven years it took for Jamie and Danny to get what they wanted. Do you think it's worth it today? Waiting on God, trusting God, believing God. What if they had never believed God for? It would have never happened. And if you don't believe what you want for God, from God, it's probably never going to happen. Because you're not asking, you're not seeking, and you're not knocking on any doors. And you're going to get exactly what you're doing. Nothing. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is sowing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. That's a God kind of love. That's a God kind of life. That's a living sacrifice. Just was defined in what I read you. Not thinking of yourself, but thinking of others more than yourself. Giving cheerfully. Giving abundantly. You know, if you never give, you're never going to receive. You can't outgive God. You know, a preacher pre preaches on um, money and everybody thinks he just wants money. No, what he's trying to tell you is, is if you give to God and you listen to the Holy Spirit, God will bless you. Okay? There's a principle. Malachi talks about that principle. You're robbing God if you're not giving to God. And then there's a curse that's put on your life. You don't have to believe that if you don't want to. But you'll never walk in the freedom if you don't believe it. And that's in anything of God's promises. Do you believe God wants you free? Do you believe that God built this nation on godly principles? And that he used men to write these things down that I read you today. And that our nation was built on godly principles. And now we're turning our backs on God. And we're letting every kind of sin come into this country and people are just turning their heads to it and not taking responsibility for it. There is a remnant. There is a remnant that God is wanting to use. And it depends whether you want to be used for God's purpose or you don't want to be used for God's purpose. And I said this last week. This is the time to reach out to those that don't know Jesus. This is the time. There's no greater time than there is right now. God is doing miraculous things in colleges and churches. He's doing things. He's doing things here. Set a young lady free. Right here in this service. I hadn't been to church for two years. I had a little note to read to you guys for three weeks. I had it in my notebook. And I always forgot to read it until that one day she walked in and I read it and she was set free. She's even went off of her medicine for depression and anxiety and all that. That's a God. Did she expect that to happen when she come here? There's a song that said, but if God is in the house, Something will change. And if you're in the presence of God, your life will change. Amen. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be free. That's what it's all about. The truth will set you what? Free. Knowing the truth will set you free. 
You can call anything truth and it's not. Truth is in this word here. And it'll set you free. It'll deliver you. It'll do everything you want. But you've got to believe God can do it. You've got to expect God can do it. And if you don't want to expect it, guess what? That's your freedom. You don't have to believe God for anything. But to see what God has done with this nation, to see what God has done with the nation of Israel, that now he's bringing them all back into the land. Because why? The end is near. And we're supposed to be about his business. The last thing he told us to do, what was it? Go make disciples. Are you? When's the last time you talked to somebody about Jesus? Made a difference in their life. I just got a call from one of my classmates and that uh, a friend of ours died. He had just retired. He went to West Virginia. He bought 240 acres or something of rolling hills. And he just died. I don't know if he, I forgot to ask if he knew the Lord or not. But all them rolling hills don't mean nothing now, do they? You got to put things into perspective. What's the important thing right now for us to do as Christians? And that is to fight this battle spiritually in this country, in our own world, in the world of Kim. You got one to do is to fight that spiritual fight. Because what's going to matter when it's all said and done? If you know Jesus or you didn't know Jesus, that's what's going to matter. That's the only thing that's going to matter. Not how many toys, not much, how much land you own. The only thing, land won't make you happy. Money won't make you happy. My wife and I drove out a foot in a solar field in East of Vega, and we drove around that. I cannot believe it. It's just amazing. You know? And they're getting big money for this. But it's not going to matter. And I thought about that a lot with this young man, he's younger than I am, that died. He had everything he wanted. And he only got to enjoy it for two years. But if he knows Jesus, he gets to enjoy it for eternity. There's a peace. And it's cliche that passes all under stain that God can give you if you just know him. Amen. We see the evidence that I wrote you, wrote or read you. The evidence of how the forefathers thought us through, prayed us through. And yet, people think they can do it better than God. You look at this world, people think that they can change this world better than God made it. It's not going to happen. It's man's thoughts, not God's thoughts. So today, as we think about this weekend and what this weekend stands for, those who gave their life for the freedom that we enjoy, that they thought more of you than they thought of themselves. That they was willing to serve their country and die. Just like Jesus. No greater love has anyone that he laid down his life for someone else. 
And our example is Jesus. He did it for your sins. Whether you accept it or not, that's up to you. You have the freedom of choice. But you don't get the promises unless you accept Jesus. They come with a condition. That you must love him. And choose him. Amen. What can we do to make a difference? We can tell people about Jesus. That will make more of a difference than anything else. The founding fathers thought. And they got to see the evidence of the blessings of this nation. And now evil forces are trying to tear it down and destroy it. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy it. And the things that they're promoting aren't right. They're not godly. And the Bible says we should come out from the earth. Not be a part of it. But we still call to be the light. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. Are you the light for Jesus? Go ahead. I forgot to put you down. I forgot to put you down. Josh, thank you. And um, I feel to mention that we are in the hospital. So, you and I are sure why. We got to do this in the meeting. We have to do this in the hospital. We're just 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 in the hospital. And Dan Stuckey, he called me last night and one was supposed to Dan Stuckey. He's got cancer. Um, okay. Let's. Doctor. Doctor. Huh? <laughs> let's pray. Father, we thank you for the hopes and the dreams that your word gives us. If we stand upon your principles, stand upon your love. And Father, we just come to intercede for Josh. Father, you know his heart. You know where he's at, spiritually and physically and emotionally. Father, and we come against that spirit of suicide, that spirit of destruction, Father. We're still praying that you would send angels into his room, Father wherever he's at with his dad or wherever he's at, Father, that you would show yourself to him and that he would see your glory and he would understand that he's been created by you and that, Father, that you have a plan and you have a purpose for his life. So, Father, we just ask that you would just touch him, that you would lead the right person to him, Father, through your Holy Spirit, to touch his heart, to minister to him. Father, we understand he has free choice, but we bind the enemy where he's bringing deception into his life to think that death is better than life. And Jesus conquered death with life. So, Father, we thank you. We lift him before your throne room, Father, this day. We cancel the enemy's assignment over him. And we raise up a standard. Father, you said you would raise, when the enemy comes in like a flood, you would raise a standard up. So, Father, we believe and trust in you. And the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Cover him, Father. Protect him from the forces that would try to destroy his life. Life is precious, and it's from you. We pray for Melvin and Dan, Father. Not sure what's going on in Melvin's life, but Father, we just pray that you would touch him, bring healing into his life, Father. And Father, if he doesn't know you, we pray that he would know you. Father, that you would have a visitation with him. And touch him, Father, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And Father, for this day, and we lift him before you. We just curse that cancer in Jesus' name. And Father, we just pray encouragement over him. And that you would touch him, Father. 
and that if he doesn't know you, you would send workers. Now, Father, as we've sorted through some material today, your word, other things, Father, we just pray that you would speak to our hearts. And Father, that we would step up and be that light, that we would have the boldness that only comes from your spirit. Father, fill us all with your Holy Spirit and power and might. It's not by our might nor our power, but it's by your spirit. Now, Father, again, be with Destiny and Troy and the family, Father. Comfort them, strengthen them, protect them. And Father, we thank you for this service today. We pray that everyone here knows you as their personal Savior. If not, Father, pray your Holy Spirit would encourage them. And Father, convict them that you took care of sin once and for all by the blood of Jesus, and that we don't have to live with guilt or shame anymore. Now, bless each one as we leave this place, Father. Be with Erica as she gives her speech today, Father. We just pray that you would bless her beyond measure. Father, that you would anoint her and that you would just uh, give her your favor with the life she lives, Father, that she would live it for you. And that people would notice the favor that's on her life, and Rachel's life, and all those that graduated. They would wonder, why are they so blessed? So, Father, let that be said about all of us. Now, we lead this to those that need you the most, Father. Be with those that are traveling. Keep them safe. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Greet two or three people, and you're dismissed.